in verse 16. Are you back there? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And this is wonderful. See, the, the different kinds of meetings. And um, uh, there are meetings for teaching, doctrine. There are pastoral meetings, okay? And a real pastoral meeting uh, is very different. It doesn't mean when the, the service takes place in church. That's not what it means. But there are pastoral meetings. If you're not in a church, you'll never enjoy the ministry of a pastor. But if you, if you really belong in a church and submit to the pastoral ministry, you'll be mightily blessed. Glory to God. And it's very important that a Christian is submitted to the pastoral ministry. Very vital. But then, in these meetings, where there are certain kinds of ministrations, he says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in psalms, and hymns, in spiritual songs. These things come from your spirit. See, they come from the prophetic gift that God has given you. And that's why the Lord says for us to desire spiritual gifts. And most of all, that we may prophesy. Because through prophecy, we can admonish one another. We can strengthen one another. The body of Christ is strengthened through the prophetic ministry. Hallelujah. Now, that's not the same thing as um, everyone being a prophet. He didn't say that we should desire to be prophets. No. He said desire to prophesy. The gift of prophecy and being a prophet are two different things. They're two different things. And even the ministry of a prophet is of diverse nature. The, uh, all prophets are not the same. You see, they're very different. You study the Bible and look at the different prophets in the Bible. The ministries are very different. See, so even if you were, were a prophet, uh, the ministry that God gives you may be very different from uh, another one. Not the same. And if you were a pastor, you probably will not have exactly the same focus as another pastor. There are differences. Hallelujah. There are differences. But it's good for us to know those areas in which God uses us and to strengthen them. One of the things that I've found in ministry is that um, if, you're not, if you're not careful to watch whatever God gives you, you can lose it. You see? Not because God will take it. No. It just goes away from you. You, you kind of... Uh, lose a, a grip of it. Anything that God gives you, it's important that it is used. It wasn't given for you to uh, hide it and just pray over it or just acknowledge that you do have something. And you're supposed to use it. But you see, you don't just get up to use it any way and everywhere. No, there are different kinds of meetings and opportunities. You have to wait for the right moment, for the right place. Otherwise, it will be an abuse of spiritual power. It has to be used right. Hallelujah. It's got to be used right. Amen. Amen. Do you have the gift of prophecy? The Bible says you may all prophesy in that by course, which means every one of us could have the gift of prophecy. And if we had enough time, the whole church could prophesy one by one. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. But it didn't say the whole church should lay hands on people one by one. You understand? He refers to the gift of prophecy. He doesn't say the whole church could, could give word of wisdom or word of knowledge one by one. No, it didn't say that. It didn't say that. He didn't say the whole church could go ahead and, and minister healing one by one. No, it didn't say that. He didn't even say 
that the whole church could go ahead and minister the gifts of the Spirit one by one. He didn't say that. He was specific about the gift of prophecy. And then he told us what the gift of prophecy should be used for. For edification, exhortation, and comfort. Never for condemnation. Never for condemnation. And then, the only time it is used in judging the spirit of a man is when the non-Christian, that's what the Bible says, when the non-Christian comes into your midst. It is through the gift of prophecy he can be identified. One who doesn't believe. Not a Christian who has a problem. Did you hear that? You know, when the gifts are used correctly, God is glorified and the church will grow. But if you use the gift of prophecy wrongly, instead of the church growing, people will believe in the church. You'd be surprised. How can the manifestation of the Spirit be driving people away from your church? But it means something is wrong. And it's one of the things that I've found among a lot of people who are gifted with so many beautiful things. The gift, how can the gift of the Spirit in your life reduce the people that are coming to your church? How could it be? It must mean that there is a wrong application of the gifts of God. Hallelujah. You still there? Glory. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse number 1, it says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Lord shall make what? Bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Everybody can be blessed. Hallelujah. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. 